Representation Theory of Finite Groups, Lecture 17, Kostka Numbers. Let us start with our setup. Let n be a positive integer and lambda and mu two partitions of n. Then we have the corresponding Specht module S lambda for the partition lambda and the permutation module M mu for the partition mu. Let us define the multiplicity k lambda mu as the multiplicity of the Specht module S lambda in the permutation module M mu. From our general theory, we know that k lambda mu is equal to the dimension of the space of all Sn homomorphisms from S lambda to M mu. We have already established that k lambda lambda is equal to 1 for any lambda. And if we use our usual notation for the dominance order on partitions, we know that k lambda mu is non-zero only in the case when lambda dominates mu. So the aim of today's lecture is to give a combinatorial interpretation for these multiplicities k lambda mu. In order to formulate the main result, we need to introduce the notion of a semi-standard Young tableau. So let lambda be a partition of L. A semi-standard Young tableau T of shape lambda is an assignment of a positive integer to each box of the Young diagram of lambda with repetitions allowed, such that the following two conditions are satisfied. All rows weakly increase left to right, and all columns strictly increase top to bottom. So we see the difference with Young tableaus. So the main difference is that we allow rows to weakly increase for semi-standard Young tableaus, while they should strictly increase for standard Young tableaus. So here are some examples of semi-standard Young tableaus of shape 2-2. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is even a standard Young tableau. Now 1, 1 and 3, 4. This is a semi-standard Young tableau since the first row weakly increases. So 1, 1, 3, 3, also a semi-standard Young tableau. Both the first and the second row weakly increase while the columns increase strictly. And here is 1, 2, 2, 4. So this is also a semi-standard Young tableau. Here are some negative examples. So the following tableaus are not semi-standard, also shape 2-2. Two, two. The first one is 1-2-1-4. One, one, so now the rows increase, but columns weakly increase. So this is not allowed. And the tableau 2-1-3-4. So here the first row does not weakly increase. Okay, next let us define the content of a semi-standard Young tableau. So we denote by SSYT sub lambda the set of all semi-standard Young tableaus of shape lambda. Directly from the definition, it follows that this set is an infinite set because we don't put any restrictions on what kind of positive integers we can assign to boxes in lambda. So let T be a semi-standard Young tableau of shape lambda. The content of T is a composition of N defined as follows. So the content of T is a composition consisting of Xi1, Xi2, Xi3, and so on, where for a positive integer i, Xi i denotes the number of boxes in our tableau T, which are marked with i. So for example, here is a semi-standard Young tableau of shape 3, 3, 2, 1. So we have 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 5, 5. So this tableau has content 2, 3, 2, 0, 2, because we have two ones, three twos, two threes, no fours, and two fives in this tableau. Now we can move into the direction of the main theorem. Let lambda be a partition of n and mu a composition of n. Let us denote by SSYT sub lambda comma mu the set of all semi-standard Young tableaus of shape lambda and content mu. Now, since mu puts restrictions on what kind of entries can be assigned to boxes of lambda, SSYT lambda mu is a finite set. And, directly from the definitions, 
we have that SSYT sub lambda is a disjoint union over all compositions mu of n of SSYT lambda mu. So the main theorem of today's lecture asserts that for any two partitions lambda and mu of n, the multiplicity k lambda mu is equal to the cardinality of the set of all semi-standard Young tableaus of shape lambda and content mu. And the terminology, which justifies the title of the lecture, the cardinality of the set SSYT lambda mu is usually called the Kostka number. So let us do some examples to illustrate the statement. Let mu be the partition n of n. So in this case, we know that the permutation module m mu is just a trivial Sn module. So if the partition lambda is equal to the partition mu and is equal to n, then there is a unique semi-standard Young tableau of shape n and content n, and it is just all once written in the Young diagram of mu. So we know that the Specht module associated to mu is a trivial module, and so the multiplicity of the trivial module in the trivial module is 1, which is the cardinality of this set SSYT and N. So if lambda is not equal to mu, then the set of semi-standard Young tableaus of shape lambda and content mu is empty, because if lambda has more than one row, then we have at least one column of length 2. But the content can only be once, so we cannot write two equal numbers in the same column of lengths more than one. So this means that this set is empty, and so the multiplicity of the corresponding S lambda in M mu is also zero in this case. Here's another example. Let mu now be the partition 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So we know that the corresponding permutation module is just a regular representation of Sn. Note that for any shape lambda, a semi-standard Young tableau of shape lambda and content 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 is just a standard tableau of shape lambda. So indeed, content 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 means that we are allowed to use 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, and so on. And so in this case, the conditions that rows increase weakly is equivalent to the conditions that rows increase strictly because we are not allowed to repeat numbers. So SSYT lambda 1 to the power n is equal to SYT lambda. We know that for any lambda, the multiplicity of the corresponding Specht module S lambda in M mu is just the dimension of S lambda. And we also know that the dimension of S lambda is equal to the cardinality of the set of all standard Young tableaus of shape lambda. Hence, the multiplicity of S lambda in M11111 is equal to the cardinality of the set of semi-standard Young tableaus of shape lambda and content 1 to the power n. And finally, yet another example. So let mu be the partition n minus 1, comma 1 of n. Then we know that the corresponding permutation module is the natural Sn module. The natural module decomposes into a direct sum of two Specht modules, S n minus 1, comma 1 and Sn. So the set of all semi-standard Young tableaus of shape n minus 1, comma 1 and the same content is just a singleton consisting of the tableau when we write once in the first row and two in the second row. The set of all semi-standard Young tableaus of shape n and cardinality n minus 1, comma 1 consists of one tableau when we write all once and then two at the end of the first row. And for all other partitions of n, the, the set of semi-standard Young tableaus of shape lambda and content n minus 1, comma 1 is empty since columns strictly increase. And if lambda is not one of these two partitions, we would need either to fill a column which has length 3, which is not possible but because we have only 1, 2, 
or a second column of lengths 2, which is again not possible. Let us now talk about generalized Young tableaus. Let lambda be a partition of n. A generalized Young tableau of shape lambda is an assignment of a positive integer to each box of the Young diagram of lambda with repetitions allowed. So the set of all generalized Young tableaus of shape lambda is denoted g by t of lambda. The notion of a content for generalized Young tableaus is defined in the same way as for semi-standard Young tableaus. So for any composition mu of n, we denote by g by t sub lambda comma mu, the set of all generalized Young tableaus of shape lambda and content mu. And then we have the corresponding decomposition that the set of all generalized Young tableaus of shape lambda is equal to the disjoint union over all mu partitions of n of the sets of generalized Young tableaus of shape lambda and content mu. And similarly to the case of semi-standard Young tableaus, we remark that each set g by t sub lambda comma mu is a finite set, while the set g by t sub lambda is infinite. Here is an example of a generalized Young tableau of shape 3, 2 and content 1, 2, 0, 2. So the first row is 2, 1, 4 and the second row is 4, 2. So now we can use the combinatorics of generalized Young tableaus to construct a new model for permutation modules. Denoted by S lambda, a standard Young tableau of shape lambda, in which the numbers 1, 2, 3, and so on, are filled in lambda left to right and top to bottom. So, for example, if lambda is 3, 2, then S lambda is a tableau 1, 2, 3, the first row, and 4, 5, the second row. Note that the group Sn acts on the set of generalized Young tableaus of shape lambda and content mu, by permuting the boxes as numbered via our tableau S lambda. So here is an example. So if we take lambda to be 3, 2 and mu to be 1 to 2, so then we can consider the following generalized Young tableau of this shape lambda and content mu. So the first row is 2, 3, 3 and the second row is 2, 1. So now let's take an element which is the product of the transposition of 1, 2 and the transposition of 4 and 5 and apply it to this generalized Young tableau. So 1, 2 should swap the boxes numbered by 1 and 2 in S lambda. So it swaps this box and this box and so the first line of the new tableau will be 3, 2, 3. And 4, 5 swaps the boxes 4 and 5 so we swap these two boxes so the second row of the new tableau will be 1, 2. So the outcome of applying this element from Sn to this generalized Young tableau will be the generalized Young tableau 3, 2, 3, 1, 2. And here is a main observation about this construction. For any partitions lambda and mu of n, the Sn module, which is the linearization of the action of Sn, on the set GYT lambda mu is isomorphic to the permutation module M mu. Note that this claim does not depend on lambda. So the formulation, the assumption depends on lambda, but the claim itself does not. It is valid for any lambda. Here is the proof. To each generalized Young tableau T of shape lambda and content mu, we associate a tabloid, which we call R sub T, so this is the Young tableau, and we take its tabloid, so this is a, will be a Young tabloid of shape mu, and this R T is defined as follows. So in the row I of R T, we write exactly those numbers J from 1 to N, for which the value of T at the box numbered by J is equal to i. So here's an example. Consider the generalized Young tableau T of shape 3, 2, which has 2, 1, 3 in the first row and 1, 2 in the second row. So it has shape 3, 2 and content 2, 2, 1. 
So the tableau as lambda for this shape is 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5. And so the corresponding tabloid R team has in the first row the numbers 2 and 4, because 1s in T stay in the boxes numbered by 2 and 4 in S lambda. So the second row of this tabloid contains 1 and 5, because 2s in T are in the boxes numbered by 1 and 5 in S lambda. And finally, the third row of RT contains 3, because 3 in T stays in the box which is numbered by 3 in S lambda. And it is easy to check by construction that mapping our generalized Young tableau T of shape lambda and content mu to the tabloid RT of shape mu gives rise to an isomorphism between the linearization of GYT lambda comma mu and the permutation SN module M mu. So here is an example. Let lambda and mu both be the partition 2 comma 1 of 3. Then the set of Young tabloids of shape mu, which is the same as lambda, consists of three elements. So we can place 1, 2 in the first row and 3 in the second row, 1, 3 in the first row, 2 in the second row, and 2, 3 in the first row and 1 in the second row. The set of generalized Young tableaus of shape lambda and content mu also contains three elements. We can have the first row being 1, 1 and the second row being 2. So the first row is 1, 2, the second is 1, and the first row is 2, 1, and the second is 1. So the isomorphism, which is constructed on the previous slide, it matches the tabloid 1, 2, and 3 with the tableau 1, 1, and 2. This is because 1 and 1 here are written in the boxes numbered by 1 and 2 in the corresponding S lambda. So the tabloid 1, 3, and 2 is matched with the tableau 1, 2, and 1, because here 1 and 1 are in the boxes numbered by 1 and 3 in S lambda. And finally, 2, 3, and 1, the tabloid is matched with 2, 1, and 1, the generalized Young tableau. And it is very clear that this matching intertwines the action of the symmetric group Sn directly by definition. So now let us construct some morphisms between permutation modules. Recall that we have this important standard Young tableau S lambda of shape lambda, in which the numbers 1, 2, 3, and so on up to n are filled in left to right and top to bottom. Proposition. For a generalized Young tableau team of shape lambda and content mu, there is a unique homomorphism denoted by Sita team from the permutation module M lambda to the linearization of GYT lambda comma mu, which sends the tabloid corresponding to S lambda to the element in this linearization given as a linear combination of all generalized Young tableaus R, which belong to the row equivalence class of T with coefficients 1. Proof. Note that the stabilizer of S lambda in Sn is directly from the definition the corresponding Young subgroup S lambda. So we know that the permutation module M lambda is isomorphic to induction of the trivial S lambda module from S lambda to Sn. By a junction, in other words, by Frobenius reciprocity, for any Sn module V, we have the isomorphism between the space of all Sn homomorphisms from M lambda to V and the space of all S lambda homomorphisms from the trivial S lambda module to the restriction of V from Sn to S lambda. So it remains to note that if you look at this element, the linear combination of all Rs from the row equivalence class of T with coefficients 1, then by construction, 
this linear combination is stabilized by each element from S lambda, because S lambda permutes boxes in each row, and this is sum over all row equivalent elements of T. So this linear combination generates a trivial S lambda module. So by this Frobenius reciprocity, it corresponds uniquely to a homomorphism from M lambda to this linearization. So here's an example. Let lambda be 3, 2 and mu be 2, 2, 1. So then S lambda is a tableau 1, 2, 3 and 4, 5. So consider the element T, which is equal to 2, 1, 1, 3, 2. So this is a generalized Young tableau of shape 3, 2 and content 2, 2, 1. Then our linear combination of all elements R in the row equivalence class of T will consist of six summons. So we should permute all elements in the first row of T independently and all elements in the second row of T also independently. So since we have two equal elements in the first row, we can permute the elements in the first row in three possible ways and in the second row in two possible ways. Altogether, we will have six summons. So our linear combination is here. So it's 2, 1, 1, 3, 2, plus 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, plus 1, 1, 2, 3, 2, plus 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, plus 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, plus 1, 1, 2, 2, 3. And this linear combination is manifestly S lambda invariant. So it corresponds to a unique homomorphism from the trivial module to the restriction of the linearization of uh, G by T lambda comma mu to S lambda. So now we have constructed homomorphisms between permutation modules. We want to restrict them to Specht modules. For a generalized Young tableau team of shape lambda and content mu, Define the homomorphism theta t overlined from the Specht module S lambda to the permutation module M mu by restricting the homomorphism theta t from M lambda to our linearization of GYT lambda mu. So we restrict it to S lambda and then also identify the target module, the linearization of GYT lambda mu with the permutation module M mu. We saw that these two modules are isomorphic. A small warning. So we define this homomorphism theta t overlined for any element t in G by t lambda comma mu. And in principle, it might happen that it is zero. So when this is zero is basically described by the following lemma. For a generalized Young tableau team of shape lambda and content mu, the action of the anti-symmetrizer associated with the column stabilizer of S lambda on T is zero if and only if T has a column which contains two equal entries. Proof. If some column of T contains the same entry in the boxes I and J, so two equal entries, and let's say the boxes are I and J, then we can factor the anti-symmetrizer of the column stabilizer of S lambda as something times the identity minus I comma J. So this follows from the sign lem. And since T has the same entry in the boxes I and J, then if we apply to T E minus the transposition of I and J, we will get zero. So this means that the anti-symmetrizer for the column stabilizer of S lambda kills T in this case. Conversely, if our anti-symmetrizer kills T, then there must exist an odd element sigma in the column stabilizer of S lambda such that it applied to T gives us T. So this is because this anti-symmetrizer contains the identity as a summand, which applied to T gives T. Since the outcome is zero, this T should cancel with something, and that something must 
have the sign minus for cancellation. And the sign minus can only be assigned to an odd element. So this justifies this claim. But in particular, this odd element cannot be the identity because the identity is an even element. And since it's an odd element, which is not the identity, it must do something in some column. So there should exist some i in n such that sigma of i is different from i. But then the boxes numbered i and sigma of i are in the same column of t, and since sigma of t is equal to t, they have the same values in t. And this proves our lemma. The previous slide gives a good hint why semi-standard tableaus are relevant for our discussion. So if we want our homomorphism theta t over line to be non-zero, we need to have the situation where t has the property that each column of t has different elements. So in fact, our main theorem follows directly from the following proposition. The elements theta t overlined where t is a semi-standard Young tableau of shape lambda and content mu form a basis of the space of all Sn homomorphisms from the Specht module S lambda to the permutation module M mu. And the proof of this proposition is very similar to the proof of the fact that the polytabloids indexed by standard Young tableaus of shape lambda form a basis of the Specht module S lambda. So we did this proof with all details previously in the course. So for the proof of this proposition, I will just give a quick walkthrough on the next slide. And for full details, I refer to section 2,10 in Sagan's book on the symmetric group. So here is a quick walk through the proof. So in order to prove this, one needs to define row and column tabloids and the corresponding dominance orders. And one proves an analog of the dominance lemma, which says that moving a smaller entry to the left produces an element which is more dominant with respect to the column dominant order. Then, similarly, as we did in the proof for the basis of Specht modules, one shows that applying our element theta t overlined, where t is a semi-standard Young tableau of shape lambda and content mu, to the polytabloid of our particular element s lambda, one gets linear combinations in which we can use this dominant lemma to identify unique maximal with respect to the dominance order summoned, so in each of these outcomes. And then this means that the images of our polytabloid ES lambda under our homomorphisms are linearly independent. So in particular, already our homomorphisms are linearly independent. So to prove the generation property, again, similarly to the basis of Specht modules, one uses the approach with Garnier elements. And all details of this are spelled out in Sagan's book. So we will do one example. So let lambda be the partition 2, 1 of 3, and mu be the partition 1, 1, 1 of 3. So we know that the Specht module for lambda is just the unique two-dimensional simple S3 module, unique two-dimensional submodule of the natural module. And we know that the permutation module for 111 is the regular S3 module. So therefore, the multiplicity of the simple module S2,1 in the regular S3 module M111 coincides with the dimension of our simple module, which means it's equal to 2. Indeed, we have two semi-standard Young tableaus of shape lambda and content mu, the tableau T, which is just 1, 2, 3, and the tableau R, which is 1, 3, and 2. 
In order to give the correct model for the Specht module S21, recall that it is a submodule of the permutation module M21. The module M21 is a natural module. It has a basis consisting of three tabloids. So the tableau three, where three is in the second row, the tableau two, where two is in the second row, and the tabloid one, where one is in the second row. So the Specht module S21 has standard basis inside this permutation module, which is given by the differences 3 minus 1 and 2 minus 1. So it's a two-dimensional module where these two differences form the standard basis. So delinearization of the semi-standard Young tableaus of shape lambda and content mu consists simply of all Young tableaus of shape lambda. So we have 1, 2, and 3, 1, 3, and 2, 2, 1, and 3, 2, 3, and 1, 3, 1, and 2, 3, 2, and 1. The tableau S lambda is 1, 2, and 3. So this is a standard Young tableau when 1, 2, 3 are written in the natural order. By definition, the homomorphism theta t sends S lambda to the linear combination of 1, 2, and 3 plus 2, 1, and 3. So consequently, the polytabloid E S lambda is sent to the element which we obtain when we apply to this linear combination the anti-symmetrizer E minus 1, 3. So this is the anti-symmetrizer for the column stabilizer of S lambda. So if we apply this element to this linear combination, we get 1, 2, and 3 plus 2, 1, and 3 minus 3, 2, and 1, so we swap these two boxes, minus 3, 1, and 2. So this is the image of this polytabloid under theta t overlined. So similarly, we can compute the image for theta r. Theta r sends the tabloid of S lambda to the linear combination of 1, 3, and 2, plus 3, 1, and 2. And so to obtain the image of the polytabloid E S lambda under theta r overlined, we need to take this sum and apply to it the anti-symmetrizer E minus the transposition of 1 and 3. And we will get 1, 3, 2, plus 3, 1, 2, minus 2, 3, 1, minus 2, 1, 3. And we see that this element is linearly independent with this element. So, for example, this one has 1, 2, 3, and this one doesn't. So, the images of the polytabloid E S lambda under the homomorphism theta t overlined and theta r overlined are linearly independent. Great. And this illustrates that we really have the dimension of the home space 2, both realized via our semi standard Young tableaus. So this verifies the assertion of the main theorem in our example. So here is a brief summary of what we did in the third part of the course. So we defined permutation modules for each partition of N, and we defined the corresponding Specht submodule of the permutation module. We proved that these Specht modules are exactly the simple as N modules. We computed an explicit basis in each Specht modules in terms of standard Young tableaus. We described the branching rules for Specht modules, and we described the multiplicities of Specht modules in permutation modules using semi-standard Young tableaus. More combinatorics of the symmetric group in connection to its representation theory will be addressed in the last part of the course. So here are some problems and questions. Question one, write down all semi-standard Young tableaus of shape 331 and content 2221. Question two, determine the multiplicity of S4,3 in M3211. Question three, decompose M321 into a direct sum of Specht modules up to isomorphism. Question four, provide all details for the proof that the SN modules 
and mu and the linearization of GYT lambda mu are isomorphic. And question five, check the assertion of the basis theorem explicitly for lambda being 3,2 and mu being 2,2,1, two, similarly to how we did in the last example. Thank you very much and see you next time.